people talked about it for centuries. The Black Irish. Dark hair, pale skin, unique eyes. They said it was because of the men from the Spanish ships who fell in love with the local Irish women. But when researchers took a close look at the Irish genome, there was no Spanish trace. What they found instead was something stranger. The dark truth hidden in plain sight for thousands of years. Most of these Spanish ships that reached Ireland in 1588 sank, and the few men who survived were caught or sent away. That means the dark hair and pale skin, people like to call Black Irish, were already there long before those ships ever showed up. To top it off, the DNA in those same West Coast families proves that those genes go back thousands of years, not just a few hundred. So that whole Spanish sailor idea is just more of a campfire story than a family tree. Then, there's the Viking and Norman story. According to this story, Vikings stormed into Ireland around the 800s, raiding, trading, and then staying for good. They built towns like Dublin and left their bloodlines behind, especially in the north and east. Then came the Normans in the 1100s, who were like a mix of the French and old Vikings. They brought their own names like Burke, Fitzgerald, Roche, and added a little more variety to the mix. But when scientists took a closer look at their DNA, the Viking and Norman blood made only a small dent in Ireland's bigger gene pool. And the funny thing is that those black Irish looks, the dark hair, pale skin, light eyes, didn't come from the Vikings or the Normans either. Those traits had been in the Irish DNA long before a single longship or Norman knight showed up. So their DNA had nothing to do with either story. Meanwhile, some people believe the Black Irish came from an older tribe that never mixed with anyone. They imagined small, secret families living out west with dark hair, blue eyes, and pale skin, keeping to themselves for ages. Sounds like a fairy tale but there's actually something real in this story. Western Ireland does have the oldest DNA in all of Europe, going back to the first people who lived here after the Ice Age. Those ancient bloodlines stayed strong because people in the West didn't move much or mix with newcomers. When Irish people started moving to America after the Great Famine in the 1840s, locals noticed how many of them had dark hair and pale skin and started calling them the Black Irish. The name stuck, but the truth goes way deeper than shipwrecks or lost tribes. It begins with the first humans who ever walked on Irish soil. And that's where the real story actually starts. The ancient DNA of Ireland's very first people. When scientists analyzed the DNA passed down by mothers, they found that most Irish women share old European roots. The main maternal lines are called H, U, T, K, and J, and they've been in Ireland since the Stone Age. The H group, especially H1 and H3, came from the first farmers who spread from the south thousands of years ago. The U group, like U5 and U4, came from even older hunter-gatherers who lived here right after the Ice Age. These maternal lines didn't disappear when new groups arrived. They quietly stayed, mixing but never getting wiped out. That's why so many Irish families today have DNA that goes right back to the very first woman who ever lived on the island. The father lines tell a different story. The biggest one in Ireland is called R1B-L21, and it spread fast around 2500 BC when the Bell Beaker people arrived. Ancient DNA studies show that their arrival led to the replacement of almost 90% of the male gene pool in Ireland within just a few generations leaving a dominant R1B-L21 signature that still defines Irish paternal ancestry today. Then came the Vikings with their R1A and I1 lines, and later the Normans with more R1B sub-branches, but they only added small layers on top of what was already there. It's crazy to think how the ancient Irish men basically vanished from the record while the women DNA quietly lived on through thousands of years of battles and invasions. Hair and eye color in Ireland is its own strange part of Ireland's polygenic history. It's not one simple gene, 
it's a bunch of them working together. The mix of early hunter-gatherers, early farmer, and later steppe DNA gave Ireland a wild range of looks. The MC1R gene plays a major part in red hair, and Ireland has more red-haired versions of that gene than almost anywhere else in the world. But those same DNA combinations also allow for jet black or very dark brown hair with bright blue or grey eyes. That's why you can see brothers and sisters in the same Irish family who look completely different. And that leads us straight into the next mystery of how the island's DNA split into clear regional clusters that still survive today. When scientists tested the Irish DNA, they were shocked at how clearly it split into ten groups. The west of Ireland with Kerry, Cork, and Galway stood out right away. People there have some of the oldest DNA in all of Europe. It barely changed for thousands of years because no one ever really came in or left. The land there is wild with cliffs, bogs, and rocky fields, and for centuries, people married within the same small areas. That kept their DNA locked in. It also means the dark hair and pale skin so many call the black Irish look survived best in the West. In fact, scientists say these people may have more of the early farmer and bell beaker blood than anywhere else on the island. The genes of the East, in contrast, got hit by every invasion in the book, while the West just carried on like nothing happened. Then, when the Vikings arrived in the 800s, they didn't even bother with the rough west coast. They set up towns in the east and north in places like Dublin, Wexford, Waterford, trading, fighting, and settling down. Their male DNA types, called R1A and I1, still show up most in those areas. The Normans joined later, around the 1100s, with castles and French accents, but they didn't mix much either. Their bloodlines show up just a little, mostly around Leinster. The West, again, was barely noticed. That's exactly why those families kept their ancient DNA while the rest of the island changed. And as for the Spanish Armada story, it sounds romantic, talking about shipwrecked sailors swimming ashore and leaving behind dark-haired babies, but DNA analysis says the Spanish signal is basically zero. Even Irish surnames tell parts of the true story, and some of them are hilarious once you get to know what they mean. Take Doyle, for example. It comes from Dub Gaul, which means dark foreigner. There's also Yui Niall, which means descendant of Niall, with Niall believed to mean champion or strong in Old Irish. Locals used it to describe Vikings from Norway, not people with dark hair. Speaking of looks, that's where the next part of the true history begins. How famine, loss, and survival changed the Irish gene pool forever. The Great Famine of the 1840s didn't only empty villages, it also affected the Irish gene pool. Millions either died or fled, and the small number who survived ended up passing down a narrower range of genes. That's what scientists call a bottleneck. Whole family lines vanished overnight while others multiplied fast in the quiet, empty countryside. This population crash changed the frequency of certain genes, especially in the West, where isolation was already strong. That's one reason rare traits, like pale skin and dark hair combinations, became more common in later generations. In those small communities, something else was also happening. Certain genetic disorders started to appear more often. The most famous one is hemochromatosis, or the Celtic curse, which is a condition whereby the body stores too much iron. Scientists linked it to a mutation called C282Y, which shows up more in Ireland than anywhere else in the world. Some experts think it might have been useful long ago when people's diets lacked iron. But now it's just a health problem. Another one is cystic fibrosis, also unusually common among Irish families probably for the same reason. Too many generations sharing the same limited DNA pool. But the funny thing is, even with all this science, the myths never died. People still love stories that sound mysterious, and to be fair, the black Irish legend does seem interesting, especially among Irish families overseas. 
It connects people to a past filled with survival, beauty, and a bit of drama. So when scientists talk about the Black Irish, they're not talking about one group or one origin. They're talking about the dark hair and light-colored eyes that came from ancient genes, not Spanish sailors. <laughs>